when we're talking about runtime security in cloud and world, but first of all, um, just to add to what Richie has said, uh, yeah, my name is Ileri Ayadili, but you can call me Ileri for short, because a lot of people find hard to pronounce my name. And I'm a cloud native engineer at Container Solutions. Um, I also created something called Get Go with Kubernetes, where I help people learn Kubernetes by workshops and book with um, co organizer. And I'm also a preacher, so when I'm not doing tech, I'm preaching. Yeah. Um, so let's dive in runtime security. The first thing, when we talk about security, you know, a lot of things come to mind. You want to have secure systems, that's a given, you know, and a lot of people talk about this thing um, where, that you call shifting security to the left, all right, it's so that we can have security not as an afterthought, you know, of things that we do. Security should be primary in any system that we're developing or we're building, you know, including our infrastructure. Security should not be an afterthought. Yeah. So, you know, you can have, when you build systems, you think of authenticating users, you know, if you're a software developer, you definitely want to do that. You probably want to have some authorization, you know, processes in place, you know, as well as authentication processes. You know, if you're an infrastructure engineer, you want to do things like static analysis of your manifest files to ensure that you know, there are no vulnerabilities. You probably want to scan your images, you know, before you go into production. You, you do a lot of things before hitting production, and that's very good. You know, we should always do that. But now there is also the part where we talk about runtime and runtime security. All right. So now my slide, yeah, I made a mistake in that slide. So runtime. So runtime has to do with now we're live, now we're in production. We are running, our systems are up and functional, but how secure are we in production? We've done all the initial checks, you know, like we mentioned, you put authentication in place, you've scanned your manifest files, your images, all of those things, but we're live. How do you, you know, check for, for issues in production? How do you check that things are not, you know, working as they should not in production. That's where runtime security comes into play. And so runtime security has to do with observing and protecting software as they run. Like that's very straightforward, right? So you're running your system and you want to ensure that you're seeing things are happening. You're being secured, you know, and you're protecting your systems against attacks. So that's where runtime security comes into play. So I'll give an example. You know, there's this thing called zero-day vulnerability, all right? And what this refers to is vulnerability attacks or vulnerabilities that, you know, that happen when, um, so say the vendor, your application vendor ships an application, all right? And that application is running in fraud, but you, the vendor did not, Take, of course, they do all of the initial checks and they find, you know, these are the errors, these are the bugs, these are the things that you should be aware of. You know, we have a new version. These are the errors in the old version. But zero the vulnerability are, uh, are vulnerabilities that the vendor is unaware of, all right? Because things can be in production and there could be attacks. You cannot prevent, you certainly cannot be aware of every possible attack that, you know, would come into your system. Right, so that's where zero-day vulnerability comes into play. And for this kind of thing, and this is just one use case for runtime security, we want to be able to detect things on the fly. We want to be able to you know, know how our systems are doing on, on as we go and you know, protect against those things. So that's runtime, that's where runtime security plays a very major role. And I don't have too many slides, of course, but I'm going to be talking about Falco. Now, Falco is a is a tool, you know, from it's it's part of the CNCF landscape now, of course. Um, it's one of the tools that helps with runtime security. And so, how did I come across Falco? Just a few weeks or months ago, I believe, I was 
taking the exam, the certificate certified Kubernetes security exam, and I saw that Falco was part of the things on the curriculum. All right. It means okay, what that means, first of all, is that for the CNCF to put this in the certification, it means that it's a very important tool, all right, in the CNCF landscape. And runtime security is also very paramount, you know, in the cloud native world. So look at think of it this way. You have your your Docker image, let's say Docker image or whatever you know container system you're using. You have your image and your application has been bundled. You push this image to a registry, and somebody takes that image and begins to just runs containers out of your image, right? So the containers are running fine. Now there could be if you had done checks like static analysis, you know, on your manifest files, you, you probably would have spotted things like your container is, is going to be running as root, and you might have blocked all of those things. So you might have seen some of those issues and fix them but say you fix all of those and you find out that there is an attack on your system something is happening and that should not be happening all right so falco helps you with those kinds of issues those kinds of problems all right so falco gives you something called a rule set you can have rules and you can detect you know, operations, certain operations based on the rule sets that they are getting. You can assert certain conditions, you know, you can check that this is happening, this should not happen. For instance, if via a container, something is being written to a particular directory, all right, and it's not supposed to write to that directory, perhaps you can, if it's, if it's a, a mutable container, which, you know, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have mutable images, mutable containers, so if your container is writing to a particular directory, maybe the um, maybe any directory that you just feel is a secure directory and shouldn't be tampered with, Falco can you can specify in a Falco rule set that if something is being written to this directory, alert me. All right, you can definitely send alerts to whatever system you want. You can have alerts on Slack. You can have alerts wherever. But the beauty about it is that you can tell when things are happening as they shouldn't, you know. But by default, Falco gives you a rule set that blocks a lot of things, all right? So you can now enable certain things. So by default, you're secure, all right? Then you can now decide to enable, based on the rules that you set, enable um, certain functionalities in your system at runtime, all right? But whatever is blocked, Falco detects and alerts you that this is what's happening in your system. Let me see. Yeah, so Falco was created by SysDig. Um, it's now a CNCF project, of course. Runtime threat detection engine. Like I said earlier, it analyzes the behavior of the system and compares it with a set of rules and triggers an alert if a positive match is found. So Falco can, um, I can, I'll just give some rundown of, I'll, of course, my, system, my, my slides are not too much, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. Now, say you, you because some people ask that, can you run Falco on Kubernetes? Can you run it on your bare metal servers and things like that? Yeah, I'll get into that, all right? But first of all, let's talk about the event sources. How does Falco, you know, get its events? How does it know? what's happening so there's this thing called system calls in linux all right and what that means is that as a linux user you're probably trying to perform an operation maybe you're reading a file or you're writing to something you're writing to this whatever operation you're doing so in linux all right and i know there was a linux um, talk just a, a few i think a few talks back um by grid so Linux has this thing called system calls where I'm trying to write to a file, all right? But underneath, what is happening is that a system, a call is being sent, all right, to carry out that operation on my behalf. I'm, not, I'm just writing to a file. But there are some system calls, there are some functions in the Linux kernel that does the actual work, 
all right so falco now so whatever i'm doing on my linux environment on my linux machine or device or you know my linux schedule whatever i'm doing it, it it has it has a system called underneath all right and so how good would it be if i can track i can have a look at those calls all right those system calls and be able to make meaning from them so for instance i get a system call i'm not a i'm not i'm not um an expert i'm by no means an expert on on, on the linux kernel all right but say you have a function that maybe is um read for instance in the linux kernel now i'm trying to read the file that function is triggered all right and what falco does is it takes that call it takes the argument to that call and it builds a story and it gives you this information so you can now say oh okay this particular container for instance is trying to write or is trying to read from this directory this particular file so you have all of that detection and your rule set in your research you might have specified that okay if somebody is trying to read from this directory that's probably an attack okay now this is runtime it's not something baked into your image it's not this is at runtime something is happening at runtime and they're looking at they are trying to read off files from your system read off documents from your system and you know Falco can give you all of these things on the fly as you go so this is runtime security that's that's where system calls come into play all right linux system calls so now you can also Falco can also get because if you're using linux for instance now this is where this is why we have these different areas all right where you can get events from so typically you take falco and you install falco on your machine all right uh, you just take the binary and you begin to execute that binary on your machine and it begins to detect system calls but if you're running something like kubernetes on the cloud gk um aks you know and and, and the likes managed kubernetes engine you don't have access to these systems you don't have access to the control plane for instance you can't SSH into the control plane and put file code there all right so what you just have is you just have kubectl you're talking to your cluster somewhere all right so falco can also retrieve events from kubernetes audit events all right so that helps you in your kubernetes environment and of course you can also read off cloud logs. You can read off activities from cloud logs too. So that's very good. Um, before I go further, let me just say this. This is my thinking, and I think this is preferable. It's better to have. So look at this scenario. If you have um, Kubernetes running on on premises, for instance, all right, on your servers, you have a couple of servers distributed and Kubernetes is running there, I would rather install, you know, have Falco running on those servers, you know, than in Kubernetes. Now, the reason for this is, if I get an attack on my Kubernetes cluster, Falco is gone. There's no detection anymore, all right? But if I have Falco on my servers, just there on my servers, all right? Even if, if something happens to my Kubernetes environment, my Kubernetes cluster on those servers, Falco can still detect those things. So I still get, I get more information as to what happened before, you know, things went bad. So I just wanted to chip that in. If you have access to your host machines, I'd advise that you put Falco there directly. All right. Um, I think I have about 10 minutes more. Yeah, so I put some resources. I was going to go into a demo, all right, but because I, I, I'm stuck somewhere, but there's this tool by Falco on lensystick.com, Falco 101, where you can, you know, have a look at Falco and see it at runtime. You can, you can have hands-on um, tutorials with Falco. So I mentioned several things that Falco has a rule set that you assert um, things against, you assert behaviors against. It has that rule set. And of course, YAML files will help you do this. 
and yeah so this is all that i have for this talk it was very short but i'm glad that i was able to do it regardless so thank you so much Um, awesome, awesome. That was that was a great presentation, um, Hilary. Um, I guess it's time for questions. So if anyone have any questions, please feel free to drop it on the YouTube chat. Um, yeah, Hilary will be happy to answer all of your questions. Um, take me a look on the and chat. I can also, um, I can also answer questions. If, you know, Yes. You can find me on Twitter, of course. Exactly. Um, yes, uh, Hilary is back to on Twitter. So um, you can find him at Hilary Ayo. Yeah. I'll, I'll post this handle on the chat as well. Um, since there are no other questions, um, I guess that's it for Hilary. Yes, uh, thank you so, so much, Hilary, for joining us. This was a super insightful talk. And yeah, we hope to, of course, we hope to see you in the next one. Uh, and yeah, keep, keep doing it, Hilary. In better conditions, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Um, in case you missed that, that was um, a session from Larry on runtime.